What's up guys? Welcome to a new tutorial. Today's topic are lower thirds. We are going to create a low third for LumaFusion with all animations and stuff and it will look great. It's a YouTube subscription lower third but you could do this yourself to, to uh, yeah, create your lower thirds for Instagram and stuff like this easily. It's just adapt this version I'm going to show you. And as always, if you don't want to create it yourself, you will find this lower third in my LumaFusion Ultimate bundle, which contains a lot of other stuff for LumaFusion. Just go and check it out up there in the right corner or down in the description box. And now let's jump right into LumaFusion. Welcome in LumaFusion. We are starting right away with creating a new project. So we are tapping on the plus button on the bottom left and opening a new project. Let's call it, let's call it lower thirds, keep it simple, tutorial. And now we have to change the frame rate to 60 frames per second because with a higher frame rate, you're more flexible. You can use it for higher frame rate projects or slower frame rate projects. That's the plus point. Then we are adding a new main title and lengthen the title to 8 seconds. This is a good length for a lower third because it's not too long but it's long enough that it shows enough information. The next step is to edit the main title by double tapping it. We are deleting the text in the titles tab because we don't want text and we are adding a shape. We are using the rectangular shape and resize it until the whole screen is wide. We are going to do this because we want to see what happens next. Then add a overlay title above the main title and lengthen it to also eight seconds. Double tap to edit, delete the text again and add again a shape. Change the face color of the shape to black. And now reduce the opacity to about 50. So we are getting a gray shape. And now drag it to the bottom left side of the frame. Let's make the shape a bit thinner and longer. It doesn't have to be exact because we are going to change it afterwards when we are adding more elements. Let's go back to our timeline and now we are adding the image of our channel. Uh, I've just copied it from Google and we are lengthening it to also 8 seconds. And of course we have to resize it until it fits the grey frame. Let's make it a bit smaller so we are getting a nice frame around it. And we are changing the position. I'm using the sliders on the right and the arrows on the right to be as precise as possible. Looks already pretty good. Now we are adding another overlay title and we are keeping the length of 4 seconds. Double tap to edit. And now let's drag the text box down in the left bottom to be able to read the text and now we are just typing in our channel name. So this would be your channel name. And of course we are going to change the font. I'm using a thicker one. And as you see, this font is very long compared to its height. So we are going to need to adjust the length of the gray frame until the font or the text fits better. I think like this should be all right. Now we are able to make the font a bit thicker or bigger and we still have enough gray frame around it. Okay, that looks good so far. Now add another overlay title or you can just copy the old one and delete the text 
or adjust the text and call it subscription or subscribe. Then add a shape, also a rectangular shape and change the face color to red. So we are going to make a subscribe button now. Of course we have to change the, the foreground and background so the, the red has to, to be behind the text so it looks like a button. Make sure you still have a nice gray frame around the red button because otherwise it look, would look weird. We have added all elements now and now we are going to fine tune the position of them. So we want everything to be right in the middle, so lined up. So we are adjusting the height of the font a bit um, because it's not right in the middle. I think we have to change the red shape also a bit smaller I think that looks better let's also adjust the height of our channel name so it lines up with the text of the subscribe button. Okay, that's it so far with step one. We have added all the elements we need and now we are going to animate those so we are getting a more vivid animation and more popping lower third. Therefore we are starting with the gray frame behind all the text and image. Double tap the first overlay title and go to frame and fit. Now add a keyframe at the first frame and change position X to minus 100 until the whole gray frame disappears. It's easier to use straight integers because they are easier to remember and we are going to need this later. You will see. Now we are moving on 10 frames and adding another keyframe and we are sliding position X to 2 because we are going to create a bounce effect. So to create the rebounds we are sliding it a bit more than we are needing it. So 2 or 3. Let's have a look. I think 3 is perfect. And then we are moving on 5 frames again, adding a keyframe and going to position X zero and we have created a bounce effect. You will see. Looks already pretty good. But that's not it. We have to create a going out animation too. So we are going to seven seconds and 45 frames and adding a keyframe. Let's move on another five frames and add another keyframe. And change position X to three again. So we are creating the going out bounce. It's easier to use the arrow buttons because the slider is sometimes a pain, but it's all right. And now go to the last frame, you can use this button, add another keyframe and set position X to minus 100. And now we have the same animation as the ingoing animation and this is one point why we have to be precise with the numbers. Of course we have to animate all the other elements as well, so we are going to do the channel image next. We are starting at the point where the animation of the gray frame ends. So I would use 25 frames and we are adding a keyframe. And we are setting the size to 0 or 0 0.1 is the smallest. Then we are moving on 10 frames or let's say 8, it's a bit uh, better in this case, and we are 
change, changing the size to let's say 9, 10, 10 is fine. And then we are moving on another five frames, adding a keyframe and bringing the image to the size we originally wanted. And now we have this popping effect. Have you seen it? It looks pretty cool. And we are going to do this with the channel name and the subscription box as well. So we are starting at the point where the image has popped. So I would go to 45 frames, add a keyframe. And like before, we have to change the size to zero. Oh, I've done a little mistake, nothing bad. Just go to titles and change the position of the text box to 50 and 50. So X50 and Y50. So it's right in the middle, it's very important. And after we've done that, we go to frame and fit and drag it to the original position. And now we can change the size to zero and it appears right in the middle. That's important. Then move on 10 frames, add another keyframe and change the size to 103. Then move on five frames, add another keyframe and change the size to 100 again. And we've created the same bounce effect uh, with the text as with the image. already looks pretty good and now we have to do a outgoing animation just adjusting the size of the bounce a bit so it's more visible now let's do the outgoing bounce so we are going to 15 frames before the last frame adding a keyframe then moving on five frames, so three seconds and 50 frames, and changing the size to 103. And now go to the last frame and reduce the size to minimum. And we have an ingoing bounce there and an outgoing bounce here. And now we're doing the same with the subscription box. Here we have done the same mistake with as with the text box, so we have to place it right in the middle, both the text and the red box. Both has to be exactly at 50-50. Let's quickly do this. It's always easier to use the arrow buttons to be as precise as possible. Now back to frame and fit drag it to the original place and then we can start animating it. We are starting again with the first frame by adding a keyframe. Then we are moving on 10 frames, adding another keyframe, going to the first keyframe, reducing the size to zero. In the second keyframe, we are increasing the size to 100 and let's do 104 this time. Then we are moving on five frames again and setting the size to 100. Let's do this. Okay, perfect. So we've done all ingoing animations so far and the outgoing animation of the gray frame. Now we have to do the outgoing animations of the image and the subscription box. We will let them slide out of the frame together with the uh, gray background frame. So we are starting with the image, channel image, going to seven seconds and 45 frames. And now we are following the animation of the gray frame. So we are moving on five frames, adding another keyframe and move position X three points further. So we are following the gray frame. It's easier when you remember 
what you've done before with the um, position x or was, what was the original number at position x. And then we are moving to the last frame, adding another keyframe and setting position x to minus 100 to, due to the original position. So in this case, minus 189.5 or 6. Let's have a look and do it again with the subscription button or box. Keyframe at 7 seconds 45 frames, moving on 5 frames, adding another keyframe, moving on 3 points in the positive direction, and then go to the last keyframe and reducing position x to minus 100 due to the original position. So minus 140, 46 or 40.6, something like that, or 143.2 was it exactly. And this looks already great. To make it a bit more professional, it's not necessary, but you could do it if you want, is to add some motion blur to it. Because motion normally follows a blur and this is pretty clean right now. Um, as I said, you don't have to do this. If you want this clean look, just let it as it is and you're done. If you want to add motion blur, just follow my examples there. And of course we want the motion blur just within the animation, so the slide animation. And we are going to use to go to color and effects and the water drop and add motion 20 at 0 0.15 frames. Then go back one frame, set another keyframe and reduce the radius to 0 at 15 frames. So that's the point when animation stops. And all the keyframes before, so 0 to 14, have a motion blur. And we are going to repeat this at the end. So setting a keyframe at 7 seconds, 45 frames, moving on one frame, add another keyframe, and then increase the radius by 20. And that's it. Now we are going to repeat this with all the other elements as well. You could just follow my example. Okay, that was the last one. I think it looks perfect right now. Yes, really like it. So if you've done it so far, great job. I hope you liked this video. Give this video a thumb up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and don't forget to, subs uh, to activate the bell so you won't miss any video in future. Um, important is if you're too lazy to, uh, yeah, to create those lower thirds yourself, you will find some examples in my LumaFusion Ultimate Bundle, which also contains a lot of other stuff you will need for LumaFusion editing and its free updates uh, lifetime. I hope we will hear each other in the next tutorial. Till then, bye!